This is D Brown, the begotten son, and you have just entered the begotten experience. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? They just want to be a part of this so bad. <laughs> so, so bad. I, I think, I don't think people understand, like, how, like, as I was growing up, being married was, like, always, like, this boring thing. Married with kids, you know, you looked at, like, uh, you know, it, it was looked at as, like, the single dudes is out there lit. They turned up and it's always going on. And then, like, yeah. being married with kids is kind of, like, you know, this boring, drug out kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it's always stuff going on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't recording. or you fixing? My damn thing um, hit the rotor and it pulled back some. Oh, <laughs> swagged out. <laughs> it was swagged out in the building. Swaggy P. I don't know where I got that from. I might have <laughs> just made that up and put it on somebody. Know. I don't know. <laughs> I might have just made that up. Um, yeah, when, when I was uh, growing up, I looked at, like, you know, Martin and Jane and was like, yo, that's great. It'd be cool to be married one day. You know what I mean? But whenever yeah. you heard about it in real life, it didn't sound like Martin and Jane. It sounded mm -hmm. more like, yo, going home to the wife, getting up to go to work. Going to happy hour. The old ball and chain. Oh, yeah, it, it sounded <laughs> terrible. Like, I was like, yo, wow, why can't it be like Martin and Gina? When fact right. of the matter is, if you a live person and you're put in a situation, it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I remember, like, times where I come in from work, like, long day, and I come in the house, and my wife and the kids, they, the kids are trying to teach my wife some new stupid ass dads mm -hmm. and the music is blasting it's like they you know i don't know i walk in the door having no idea what i'm gonna walk into <laughs> you know i walk in there maybe there's a shitty diaper waiting for me that i have to change mm -hmm. maybe there is this woman doing a dance that's not for our age range while the kids are like no like this you do it like this you know what i mean um and I've come to realize that it's always something interesting happening. Mm -hmm. There's always something, like, to the point where uh, very rarely am I home alone. And when I'm home alone is when it hits me. It's like, bro, I don't know what to do. I'm just kind of <laughs> in here. Like, you know what I mean? And I'll be playing a game or watching a movie or whatever I'm doing prepared for somebody to walk in. And when it doesn't happen, it's just kind of like, Hey, it's kind of weird. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And it, it's really funny for me because I'm the only child. Mm -hmm. I'm used to being alone. I'm right. used to being away from it all. I grew up without it being anybody. It was me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So being in the house by myself was like, huh, it was just a thing. Right. You know what I mean? And now I've even reached a point where, like, when I'm home alone and it's quiet, you just kind of be like, I need a little bit of noise so I can go to sleep. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I just need a little <laughs> something. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I think that also happens to um, city kids that go out into, like, the country. Right, yeah. They get out there, and it's like, I can't sleep. It's too quiet. Which yep. sounds weird, but it's like, yeah, ain't no gunshots, no sirens, no nothing. Like, <laughs> Ain't no crackheads fighting outside. Like, right, you know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's just nothing. It's just too quiet for me to be comfortable. Yeah, that's 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 a weird thing. But uh, it, it, it hits on something even weirder that um, too much of anything could be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what we experience in all these different fields when... Um, we say that things have gone too far. Like, when we talk about, like, music, we're like, you know, the, you know, the rap game is dead, everybody doing dancing, and, or then it's like everybody, you know, it's all this mumble rap, oh, these ain't no real lyricists, mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And I don't think that that's the problem. I think that the problem is we've become a genre of the wave. Yeah. No one really wants to create the wave. Everybody just wants to jump on it and jump ride it. You know what I mean? So when we had the uh, Laffy Taffy, we heard that song 
30 times that year. It was like different versions of it. Mm -hmm. You know, here's right. another one, and here's another one. And we got singers doing it. And then it's like, wait a minute, is this R&B or hip? What is this? Right. Like, you know, and then we, we graduated. Let's go to the trap rap. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the trap. And then we graduate. All right, let's mumble. We're not even saying words anymore. We just, <laughs> none of it, none of it. It's all about the feel. It's, yeah, it's like. It's all about the feel. And when I think back to it, you know, the, the, the golden the golden era all of this existed right and that's what I was going to say yeah, all of this stuff that. there, there was we, we got to remember that there was an MC Hammer right he was there and I got to be honest as a kid I was doing a typewriter mm -hmm. I'm just very lucky that we couldn't afford a camcorder so I ain't got to worry about no footage coming <laughs> out but you know I, I was listening to Hammer right and then Nas mm-hmm I was listening to, you know, um, um, Ice, Ice, Baby. Mm -hmm. And then, Rock Him. Rock Him, right. You know, uh, what, who was it? The 69 Boys? The, the uh, Tootsie yeah, Roll? Yeah, Tootsie you know, Roll. That was yeah. my joy. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's because that's what I was going to say when you when you said about too much of, of anything can be bad. And I, because I was just having this conversation um, last week, actually. Uh -huh. And I was just saying, like, I can't, I'm not going to crap on today's music like that mm -hmm. I'm not like yes it's a lot of stuff that I don't like right but I'm not gonna crap on it because I remember back then like you were just saying about about the Tootsie Rolls and and MC Hammer and 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 we always joke on Vanilla Ice but we would be bumping that you joke. gotta remember when it came out like right, it, when it, it, came it wasn't out. the butt of jokes <laughs> it wasn't it was like yeah, it's a hit you know yeah. so stuff like that um I was even I was even thinking about um when I when I was talking about this I was even thinking about uh, uh my man Nelly, like we know Nelly killed a lot of stuff especially yep. with his voice he would he would um bring a lot a lot of um lyrics and it would be just good just by the way he's bringing it just yep. the flow and his voice, but I will say that first song that blew him up, he the rap was catchy yep that's why we liked it. The, the 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 hook was catch down down baby your yeah. street and like he's talking about basically doing a drive by, yep and it sounds cool and it it it, it was so nice <laughs> that you almost don't realize what he's talking about exactly it was genius I ain't gonna lie that was genius right and we was bumping that but honestly that beat was trash yeah. like. I mean, if people want to disagree with me, go ahead and disagree. But when you listen to that beat, okay, the drums, the 808 and, the, and, and all that was, was fine. But listen to the music. It's just these... Like, it just, like just guitars like that and nothing else with it. And it, it was nothing that was really catchy. Like, the music wasn't yeah. catchy. Nothing about it was... Like, if you take Nelly's voice off of that, it wouldn't have been a hit song. You know how um, <laughs> I found out that I didn't like the beat? Because I didn't know I didn't like the beat. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, the song is dope. And, you know, I'm a rapper. And my whole thing is, oh, this the hot song? I'm jacking it. Right. You know, I go get me the single so I can get that instrumental. And when I played the instrumental, I was like, <laughs> the energy minute, just what? sucked out of it. Wasn't yeah, it? I was like, <laughs> and that's why there is no record of me ever rapping on that Over beat that one. and I you know you, you gotta salute Nelly on that because yeah, I think he heard that and was like I could do something to that right you know what I mean like you you gotta know how much confidence that take because that's the beat that somebody would have gave me and I'd have been like ah this ain't the one chief like bro what are you doing man this ain't for me you know what I mean but you 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 gotta you gotta give credit to somebody yeah. to look at that and say yeah so it's like here, thinking about those type of songs where if you would play that right now, if that was like a new thing, mm -hmm. a lot of us, even now, a lot of us would be like, what, what the hell is that? You know? True. Matter of fact, um, another song I know I liked. Um, you probably liked it. If not, please tell me. But uh -huh. another one was um, Juvenile. Oh, man. Like, that was like the joint. greatest joint ever. Like, See? When, I first, when I first heard it, though, I wanted to hate it. I did too. You know what I mean? I, and I remember my cousin told me about it. He was like, "Yo, it's this new, it's this new dude." He's saying, "Huh?" After everything, and I was like, "Yeah, that doesn't sound good at all." <laughs> I don't think I want to hear this song. He's like, "No, right. it's kind of, it's kind of catchy." And then I heard it, and I was like, 
I saw the video mm-hmm. and I was like, nah, this ain't it, Chief. This right. ain't the one. Right. And then I found myself singing it days later and I didn't know the words. I was just like, like, I was like, damn, he got me. And then as you go back and you listen, you're like, yo, he's saying some real stuff here. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? As you that can't keep old lady because you keep handling our friends. <laughs> like, what? That That's real. Like, right. You know. Like the way that it, all, it was all, like, packaged, like, it will it be one of those things. Once again, yeah. we listen to it today and be like, yo, this is trash. But back then, we was bumping it. Yeah, man. And it, that was, and like you said, when, when you dig into it, it, it actually had some good stuff in it. He was saying, but, yeah. Back then, we was listening to certain type of... We had a, a certain type of different raps that was coming out where you actually had to spit a certain way. Yep. So when that came out and it was more laid back, we all was like... A lot of us at first was like, what, what is this? But at the same time, like you said, it caught us. Yeah. And we would bounce to that. It would come on in the clubs. We would love it. So that's why I'm like, I can't crap on what's out here today like that because... I might not care to listen to it unless I'm at a party. Yeah, yeah. Where where you are is very We're, important. Right. But for the most part, we had the same stuff. We had so much stuff back yeah. then. But like you said, the balance of it was that you, you could listen to something like that, um, something like the Laffy Taffy, something um, like the, I can't even remember the, the other one. Um, what? Um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think. Um, it's going down, meet me in the club. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, stuff yeah. Stuff like that. Like that was a, I, we would dance to that. Yeah. But then at the same time, after that go off, we put on some Jay Z, and all would be right with the world still. And that's that's I think that's the key, and that's what we need is is the balance. Yeah. It, it's kind of like, as the world got smaller, as we got like more connected, we stopped getting different styles because um, the reason why I couldn't rock with uh, Juvenile at first is because. I'm used to the head nod, mm-hmm. you know, boom bap rap. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then this coming, doom, 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 doom. You like, <laughs> what is this? You know right, what I mean? Right. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But but the the, the regions <laughs> were like we had our sounds. Mm-hmm. You know, you listen to Cali, go to the West Coast and listen to their music. No, no, let's just look at Cali. Mm-hmm. If you look at Death Row. They had their sound. But then you go to the Bay. Mm-hmm. It didn't even sound like that. Right. You know what I mean? It was different. Mm-hmm. L.A., the Bay, and they right there. Yeah. But it's not the same. Um, <clears throat> then you got New York, and then you could go down south. You got Atlanta. And Atlanta and Houston sound wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. You know, now, and this is, you know, go back when we was talking about Mims. The first thing I thought was, oh, this is another down south nigga. And right. it was like, no. Like New York. He's from New York? What you mean New York? How is that possible? Right, because we were so used to yeah. New York people spit. And I think that that's why I was initially against Mims, because I thought that he was fronting to be something he wasn't. Mm-hmm. You know, where now, even here in Baltimore, I'll hear one dude rap, he sound like Future. Mm-hmm. And I hear another dude rap, and, and <clears throat> he, he he kicking like like guru, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And these dudes live like three houses away from each other. Mm-hmm. They grew up together and everything. But since we're so influenced by everything around us, mm-hmm. if this guy grew up on Future, that's what he does. That's what he is. That's right. where that sound comes from and his idea of rap. And this is what it sounds like. And and it's funny because I also think <clears> about. <throat> The things that contribute to that also where as as the times went on of course we will always hear certain things um from the 90s the 80s 90s 2000s um 2010 and it will always be a certain sound yeah and before the internet popped off in the way that it popped off it was always <clears throat> well we have to be like them yeah. we have to be like okay this the sound we got to be like that so people were just trying to emulate these people and it's so ironic that now that we have the freedom of the internet and the freedom of not just the internet well a lot to do of course with the internet but the 
the big wins that we had as, as that we have as independent artists, mm-hmm. you know, like like Chance the Rapper winning a Grammy and stuff. Right. Like these big wins, we have these big wins, but yet we're in a time where everybody want to sound more like everybody else still. So it's, scary. it's not, it, and it's still. It's, so it's funny that we want to say, well, this, like you said, this the way everybody want to ride the wave. Yeah, you know, everybody wants to be like this type of person, this type of rapper, because that's what pays. And we're still thinking in that old model, yep. even though these are these are a lot of, of course, uh, people that's been through it. But then also even the, the p- new people that's coming into the um the music music industry that that could be far so far away from what we had to deal with. Yep, they still want to do what other people are doing because that's the way. And I think that that gets very scary, and this is why it it scares me, because we forget that music is art. Mm. And if you're looking at it just as business, I mean, of course, you have to be business-oriented if you get in here, because Mm -hmm. if you don't, people would love to lube you up and do what they... I mean, if you're lucky, they lube you up. If not, then you just get the raw deal of it, Mm -hmm. and you lay there crying as they walk away with your money. (laughs) Right. You know, um, but the art is put less... Mm-hmm. Now, um, and people are afraid to create art. Mm-hmm. All they're doing now is saying, that worked, I'll do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And <clears throat> where I think, like, in our golden era that we talk about, nobody wanted to be like anybody else. Right. And that changes everything, you know what I mean? But this is where, and this is the bittersweet piece, Um who started, like, this whole wave of everything we have going on? It's somebody I'm not a fan of, you know, like, as far as their music goes. But I salute them for what they did. Mm-hmm. Soldier Boy. Yeah. He was the one that ran over the hill and took all the arrows and came back. Like, yo, they got <laughs> arrows over right, there. Right, right. Like, remember, they killed Soldier Boy for what he did. But if he didn't do that, then... The, even the term SoundCloud rapper doesn't even exist. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, becoming a star from your living room doesn't exist, mm-hmm. or not even living room in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. Some of these, some of these kids are becoming stars, and their parents are downstairs chilling, have no idea mm-hmm. that their child is upstairs getting millions of streams. Right? You know what I mean? Like he's in the same house, and you don't even know he popping. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Until one day he's like, "Hey, Ma, can you take me to?" L.A.? <laughs> for what? I, we don't have the money for that. Oh, I got money. Where did you get money from? You right. know what I mean? That's, that's how it's going down. Mm-hmm. Like, we're, we're watching that happen, and it's like, it's beautiful because that can happen. Mm-hmm. And we get to sidestep around the labels and the, the guardians of the gate standing there with their arms locked, nobody mm-hmm. getting in here. We get to sidestep around them and say, okay, forget y'all. We go straight to the people. But... On the other end, it's kind of like when you leave people to A and R themselves, they kind of just look at, oh, what are you doing? That's hot. I need that. Mm-hmm. And that's when you start getting people saying, I need the club record. Kind of looking for that, once again, that shortcut, which people, period, are notorious yeah. for wanting to do. Hop on the wave. What's the, yeah, if that if that's working, then I can do that and I should be able to pop just like them. And then we end up with everybody sounding the same. And it's like, yo, this kid in Arkansas sounds just like this guy from Atlanta mm-hmm. who sounds like this guy from Canada. And you're like, how is this possible? You're right. You know what I mean? You're like, right. the three of y'all should not sound alike. <laughs> you're right. You know what I mean? <laughs> y'all are different places. Different but. places. Different experiences. Different, just, the art. and if you're doing the artistry, then it should be just some type of different sound. Right, but like, somehow y'all sound alike. Like even if we're on the same track, it should be something that's different. Yeah. And right now, of course, as we know, people be on the same track, and and this is the thing that changed too. That was funny because it used to be different. Where now people on the same track, and they all have that. Of course, the auto tune. Can't forget the auto tune. Right. But then on top of that, they have the same flow. Yep. With the same breaks at the same spots. Yep. And um and basically really saying the same stuff over and over. Cause I remember listening to one one joint. Actually, I think it was on Lil Wayne joint. Uh-huh. I mean, I ain't going. It was like, of course, Lil Wayne does his thing. Right. But then his his feature. 
I I would say I ain't gonna put him on blast, but I can't even remember right now. But, oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know, like, but you know, Wayne says you know through it, you know something about about um a, a line about Russell Westbrook, and he says hustle West, Westbrook. Um, but then the feature comes on there, and he say I do something like um, it's a hustle Westbrook type thing. But then at the like three lines later. He says, just like Russell Westbrook. And I'm like, how do you, like, we know uh, about flipping a word. Yeah. But the way that that was delivered, it was just so, to me, lazy. But then at the same time, like, he sounded just like a younger Wayne. Younger Wayne, yeah. And it gets to a point where you're <clears throat> like, why do I need you on the song? I was watching, um, you know, uh, Jadakiss' album that just came out not too long ago, which I really rock with, by the way. Mm. Um so I listened to a bunch of his interviews. Oh yeah, I had to tell you about Jada too. So I'm glad you rocked he, with her. He said, uh, "What a lot of people don't realize is, if I call you for the feature, I call to get you mm-hmm. to do you for this feature. You know what I mean? So, you know, but people are like, oh, it's Jada. I got to do it like this. And he's mm-hmm. like, if I wanted that, I wouldn't have came to you because we don't know you for that. Right? I I called you for you to be you." Right. And it, it even happens like in, you know, our era and what we like. Like, lyricists love Jadakiss. Mm-hmm. So when he does a song with the auto-tune sing-songy rapper, they may think that they have to become this lyricist, but it's just like, yo, I hit you because I heard your sing-songy rap mm-hmm. and was like, this would be perfect for this song. Right. And it kind of throws everything off when you jump on here and you try to be me mm-hmm. instead of being you. And then this is how we end up in the world of the sound alikes. Everybody right. sounds exactly the Everybody same. Everybody sound the same. Sound is that, and that's why for me, um, where, where I look at a lot of this stuff, that's why I was like, well, this is what we're going to do with Begotten Sounds. Right. Where I want to, my mission is to bring creativity to the masses. Yes. At least when it comes to this music, but on an overall scale, much more than just music. But when seeing that we're talking about music, that's why when I look at these things, as we started off the podcast with, that's why I'm not going to crap on these people. Uh-huh. But at the same time, I want this is the message that I want to bring where if we're going to do songs, if we're going to do music, especially when we're free, yeah. Now to just drop whenever we feel like it, yep. and still drop an al- album whenever we feel like it, and still get that that the masses to listen. Why are we still following the old ways? Why are we still following the cookie cutter ways of this is the sound? Like you said, the new wave. This is the wave. So let me do that instead of paving our own lanes in our own spots. Because then if we did that, mm-hmm. then I can listen to. Amigos and being like, yeah, this joint goes, and then listen to a little whoever you want to put after that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear the little whoever, whatever name after that, sounding just like Migos. Yeah, I want to listen to Amigos and be like, all right, I'm getting turned, and then I want to go listen to a Nas, like you were saying, or just yeah. something else that's off the wall, like it, like a um Tyler the Creator, uh-huh. um stuff like that. <clears throat> so. I, so for Begotten Sounds, that's one thing right there where it's like, let's give them just that creativeness where we be us. And then in production wise, I make whatever I make to do for whoever, give them their own sound. And me and you, you know, we talked about this. Right. Give them their own sound. And now that person, that artist is known for this and more people can actually come to you like a Jada Kiss that be like I want you for you for your sound yeah and you know to go there <clears throat> and do you because yep. that's why people love you exactly you know because I like like I said we talked about this before about I'm not I'm, I'm not going to try I, I, I don't like it when people say oh can you make a future type beat and I'm like no, why would I do that like, you're not future you're not future <laughs> you know yeah. I'm going to make a Ty <clears throat> Kills them type beat right. so now when they know Ty Kills them they know this is his sound like make a sound for these people Mm -hmm. and then as you as a rapper you're going to get on there and do your thing I'm not going to get you on there and then you sounding like Future and I'm just like what are you doing 
you know. It's, it's kind of like, and, and this is what I think, like, a lot of, like, young artists, you know what I mean, rappers or singers, because it seems to be in those genres that this yeah. happens. Yeah. What I think that they have the issue is, yo, know, you got a Bentley, then you got a Chrysler 300. You get the Chrysler 300 because you can't afford the Bentley. It's cheaper. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about music, it's on the even playing field. Mm -hmm. When my music comes out, it's going to be as accessible as Jay-Z's music. Mm -hmm. So if you got Jay-Z, why would they want diet Jay-Z? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like They would be like, yo, if I want to listen to Jay, I'm going to listen to him. If I want to listen to Future, I'm going to listen to Future. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear low-budget Future, right. especially if they're the same price now if... In order to get future album, it costs a hundred dollars, and mine is only two dollars. Then maybe there's a lane for me to be Baby Future. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But right. if we could stream it for free on our platform, I'm gonna listen to him because this is him. He's authentic. It's him, mm -hmm. and you are just trying to be him. Right. You know what I mean? And <clears throat> a lot of them don't realize that concept that they put themselves in a position where they can't grow. They can't do anything. And mm -hmm. we've watched it happen with designer mm -hmm. you know what I mean and from what I hear because I don't know from what I hear he is a very talented artist and I heard the same thing you know um, and Panda was jumping and when I heard it I was like I ain't gonna lie I kinda like this future new song like I, right. I really rock with this joint <laughs> right. and he was like yeah that's not future that's designer and I was like he designed what and he was <laughs> like no 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 it's another artist and I'm like where you start feeling like the old man like but he sounds like Future. Right, like, that's Future. <clears throat> like, and they don't understand. Like, you're saying that he's another person? Is this, like, an alter ego? Like, how does this work? <laughs> you know right. what I mean? And I remember talking to, like, younger younger uh, dudes about it, and they would be like, if you only knew how old you sound. I was like, but I don't think y'all understand how crazy this is to me. Mm -hmm. Because I came up in an era where sounding like somebody meant, yo, we good on yo, we don't need him. Mm-hmm. No, nah, we good. You know what I mean? Like, um, how uh, Wu Tang was shooting at Biggie for the album cover because they said he bit Nas. <laughs> right, right. Because Nas had a young him on the cover, mm -hmm. and now Biggie's the baby, and he was like, yo, we biting off of him. Now, me personally, I don't think that that's biting because they look like different covers. Different covers, right. But it was so important to be different that something that small. Yeah. was an issue not even for yeah. Nas it was a third party <laughs> yeah you, and, and that's true because it's, <clears throat> especially around in that time you were really you could lose your career if people start saying yo you you bit off for such and such yeah versus, you, you, because we were here biting from Nas or biting a lot of people biting from Biggie and oh you trying to be another Tupac Tupac said that with this and you like yeah now it, oh well I mean no he jumping like Wait, but he just really just said everything that homeboy just said. Why do we need him? It's the vibe, man. It's the vibe. <laughs> right. It get, hey, you know the man, vibe, when it, come, man. when it comes on in a club, it yeah. just... Like, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what? That, that just made me think as we're talking about it. Do you think that we have any, like, real stars? Or do we have situations? Because <laughs> we were, like, fans of Wu-Tang. Mm -hmm. It wasn't cream that we were fans of. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the ice cream man is coming. It wasn't M E T H O D. It wasn't, you know, uh Thirty Six Chambers as an album. It mm -hmm. was Wu Tang. Mm -hmm. When Wu Tang does something, we pay attention. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I say that because when it's in the club, they all sound like there's so many people that came out because I was uh, around the time where I started seeing the shift mm -hmm. in like 07, 08 is when I was doing events heavy. I had a bunch of parties and at the parties I was playing music that I didn't particularly like but I knew it would jump in the party. Mm -hmm. um, and there was so many people from like 2007, maybe that whole year, they were fire, mm -hmm. and they couldn't come back the next year. And nobody even asked where they were. You know what I mean? Think about Wu-Tang. Could Method Man have disappeared in 94 without somebody saying something? People would have been like, yo, where is he? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Could Biggie have disappeared? He, When he died, it shook the world because it was like, 
yo, we need that. Right. When Pac died, it shook the world because it's like, yo, we need that. But now it's just kind of like. <laughs> Before you even say that, when 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 Rockefeller was on on the rocks, we all knew, and we was like, right. "Wait a minute, I'm not I'm not hearing from from Young Chris anymore like that." Right? What's going on? Because we became fans of the people, and what I think is happening now is they're becoming fans of the wave, mm-hmm. and you understand eventually the wave just crashes and dies out, mm-hmm. and when it does, they're like, "Cool, next thing, next one." You know what I mean? So, because we, well, not we, because we're older and we have to identify and attach to them. But the younger generation, they don't appear to be, like, connected to anything long. Mm-hmm. Their end here is like, oh, wow, he said something crazy over here. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's just, like, that easy to jump ship. I think I think it, well, one, because, like, like, we've been talking about everybody sounding the same. And mm-hmm. now that's fine. So now, whenever somebody goes out, who cares? Because we got somebody else coming in. You know, that's one thing. But then on top of that, I also think it's because of a lot of us that's um, just growing up now in this internet age, where this is all we know, um, the good part of the internet. You right. Know, not the not the dial-up. Right, right, right. <laughs> the yeah, one that's right here on your hand, we can just go and look at any video that we want to look at which is like good you know we, yeah. we're not slave to the to whatever they programmed on tv we if we want to watch something we can watch um you know if we want to watch some fly fishing we watch it right something crazy right. like sure want to watch um and i just say for like a good show we want to watch somebody give an interview while eating hot wings then we're going to watch that man side note again if somebody pitched that idea to me, I would have been like, yo, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Right. And I faithfully watched this show. It's, I watched like, it. I, 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 I love it. Like, <laughs> I'll be dying off of what's Yeah, it, it, it's, it's great, but <laughs> right. it's all in the execution, but continue. Right. So, yeah, so now that we have this freedom and the, the speed, and that's why, that's why I keep saying about the internet, the speed that we're at with the internet where we're not on, if anybody remembers Edge, like Edge was just you click on a website and then you put your phone down for five minutes because that thing going to take all day True. to pop up. So now we just click, go, boom, we there. So it's trained us, especially the, pe- the, the um, generations that's grown up in it. With it yeah. they, this is all they know. So now they're trained to whatever they want. They just go, it's a click away, just boom, boom, boom. So now we're able to move around to different topics so fast, whatever we want to see. And that just carries over to music where now, okay, this this artist popping, boom, all right, what's the new thing? What's the new thing? Wait, what's the what's the new thing? And you just swipe right, it, looking right. for the newest. Because we, we, we heard it from, from the movie Atlanta, you know? Her name was New New because she's always up on that new. Yeah. You know, so now we have a generations of people that's always want always to be up, up on, on the new. new. Yeah. Because once it's old, okay, well, we got, we're being inundated with enough streams of new material coming in I just need to find it man it, that that just made me think of something man I'm, <laughs> I'm even victim to that um, I'm, I'm definitely a victim of that because uh, last year I said yo what's up with Kendrick he hasn't dropped anything in a while mm-hmm. and I wasn't joking I was so serious um when, I mean, jumping back on uh, Wu-Tang, like, the gap between 36 Chambers and Wu-Tang Forever was, like, what, like, four years? Four years. You know, the gap between Method Man first two projects was, like, I don't even know. Mm-hmm. It was, like, a wow. You know what I mean? And that was normal, but we got so fast-paced that Kendrick dropped, it was hot. And oh, it wasn't even last year, it was like the year before last. So we're talking, like, a year after Damn. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, where he been at? He been quiet. It's time, time for him to drop. Right. What's up with him? Like, and I remember when we didn't have all of this. Mm-hmm. So I can only imagine the kids that always had it like this, they probably always feel like this. That's why you got people dropping a uh, mixtape every month. Mm-hmm. Because after it come out today, we listen to it. It's dope. Next week, it's okay. Week after, uh, something else. Three months later, it's a throwback. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, 
yo, y'all wasn't even up on this. You wasn't outside when this came on. Like, yo, that was like two months ago. <laughs> it was two months. I was definitely outside. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But right. it, it's, it moves so quick that I don't even think it's digested. Mm-mm. That's why was st- stuff come out at midnight, and then by 3 a.m., it was a classic. Like, how do you know? Right. Right. If we talk in classics, why don't I hear Crank That Soldier more? Mm-hmm. Because when it came out, it was like the biggest thing ever. Yep. But I don't hear people like throwing on the throwback Soldier Boy set. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Um, because we just throw them away. Yep. We would listen, and it's like, yo, it's cool now. Okay, it's not cool anymore. Throw it away. Right, that was that was then. Can we move on? Like, it, n- none of that staying power. Even if, like, classic classics, even if they sound dated, you know, they, it comes on, and you're like, oh, this used to be my joint. And then right. you get nostalgia. But like you said, with a lot of this stuff, you were like, come on, man, turn it off. What are you doing? It don't even sound like today. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nuts. Um... I meant to bring it up when I was talking about Jada Kiss. Um, one thing I loved about like the golden era, because um, I always felt like this, but hearing him talk about it had me like, wow, that they were, it was like light beef on the tracks. Yeah, yeah. And he he, he said in an interview that um, he said, yeah, you go in there and you got your silencer on because y'all are shooting at each other mm-hmm. and he said uh, the first record they did with uh, Big you'll see mm-hmm. he said if you listen to Big's verse he was talking about us mm-hmm. you know what I mean like you don't want a song with a dude that's trying to take your head off right so you better come back with it and I think that that level of competition made it great where if I go in the studio with you and I'm like I know he coming to kill me so mm-hmm. and I gotta go first oh yeah I gotta make sure I kill him Right. You know what I mean? And that makes, like, the best music because I'm trying to beat you, you trying to beat me. The song just it, gets... It has to get, you know what I mean? We have to go at it. Right. You know, and then they start talking about, like, you know, little verses where he said stuff, and they had mentioned, like, in the brief period where they was beefing with Jay, and he was like, no, I was shooting at him, but it wasn't really a beef. Mm. You know what I mean? Um he mentioned uh, what's what's Jay Z posse cut that had uh, beans on it, the locks. What's the name of that? Um, Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, the I think that is dog. it. it when Styles um, come on, like I don't give a f who you are. Uh, so, so f. Who you he, are. he was yeah, talking yeah. to Jay. Yeah. He said he was talking to Jay, and I was like, <laughs> but that level of competition made for every time I listened to that song when it first came out. Somebody else had the better verse. Right. It was like, I ain't gonna lie, yo. I don't know. Whoever this Beanie Siegel dude is, because you gotta remember, we didn't know right, who he was. Right, right. He had the best verse. Then you listen again, you're like, ah, uh, Styles kind of, mm-hmm. Styles got the best verse. I remember that song because I felt the same way. Right. I felt like, yo, this but, song is dope. And every, that was a good example of everyone being different on it, too. Yep. Nobody sounded the same. Nobody came and rapped the same way. Everybody had their own style on there. And, as you just pointed out, to trying to kill each other on there. And it, it's <laughs> important. You know what I mean? We want a song together, but if you don't come, right. you get knocked out. Like, you get knocked out, and then everybody's going to... Then everybody's going to be talking about, oh, that the, the infamous lines that we heard back then was that he killed you on your own track. Right. You never wanted that. No, you don't you want that. You never wanted that. <laughs> Speaking of that line... This is an ongoing debate, like, for, forever. You know where I'm going, too. I think, uh, I think so. Renegade. I better it. verse. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Who has the better verse? Oh, my gosh. I could jump out there with Bonds. I'm going to go with him. You going with him? I'm going to go with him. Okay. Like, Jay is my mans. Yeah. <laughs> you see, and it's so hard. It's so hard to say it. <laughs> to be like, I think Eminem did his thing on there. I think he did. I thought the same thing. As I got older, Jay-Z's part got better to me. Mm-hmm. So now I give it to Jay. But I initially said, it, like, just the way he flowed, he, he rolled on it. But I think that Eminem kind of had a one-up on Jay anyway because the song was already done. Mm-hmm. It was an Eminem song with Royce the 5'9". Mm-hmm. And they took Royce off and just <laughs> plugged in Jay. But it's also kind of like, 
Eminem's handicap because he didn't get to do nothing new. Mm-hmm. Jay got to hear his verse and say, all right, let me write my stuff. I'm a, Well, not write, but let me get my stuff on here. And But what I loved about it is they're not even using the same flow. They're not. It's so different. It's like, it's weird. Yeah, he didn't have the same ver- They didn't have the same flow. Uh-huh. Um... I know why you say Jay, because when you listen to the stuff that he was talking about, it's as he say, that's that's that real stuff. That right. I, I feel that. I feel that. And at the same time, I I be saying M mainly because, like you said, the flow on it, the wordplay, the wordplay, yeah. and I and I was and I was actually when I first heard it, I was so mad because of course I like Eminem, but at the time I'm like, yo, Jay, Jay is Jay is it. Yeah. So when I heard it, I'm just like. I was ho- so happy when I heard um, M- um, Jay's part, but when I heard M's, I'm just like, damn, damn, man. <laughs> damn. He killed my man. Just, don't do that. <laughs> don't do it. Right. So, I don't know. So, But, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like, like we were saying. Like, you never want to be in that position where you get killed on your own track because you never live it down, just like we're doing right now. How long ago was yeah, that? Was that 01? 01, and we're still talking about like 10 that. 10 years later. As yeah. an example. Like, no, you don't want it. You don't want that to happen. Because it, it lives on forever. But th- can you think of any, like, you know, we're not talking about, like, the legends. Can right. you think of, like, any new artists from, like, the past, like, three years that got together with that mentality of, oh, no, you're not about to kill me on here? Man, I don't know. No. I don't have any off the top of my head I'm either. A, I'm just, I'm just going to say no. Because yeah. mainly they all go in and just want to have fun. I, and I don't want to say have fun, like minimize it, saying yeah. it's not cool to have fun. But I mean it as in, oh, yeah, let's make this. Oh, you got it. Oh, I like that flow. Let me let me do that. Even when they do remixes. Right. Like, oh, yeah, I liked how you flew, um, how, how the flow was on this. Let me rap just like that with this. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's strange. I, I can't remember who said it. They compared it to um, basketball. They say, yo, if you play basketball, and I play basketball, and we're best friends, and we get on the court, no. Mm-hmm. We'd be friends when this is over. Right. I'm trying to put, thir- I'm trying to score 30 on you. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to dunk on your head. I-, I can't remember who it was. One dude said, if my mother get in the lane, she get dunked on. <laughs> I was like, yo, that is hard. He said, my mother knows she better not step on that court. I'm going to give her the blues. You know what I mean? But it's like, it's just the competitive nature. Right. You know what I mean? We can be best friends, but we get on the court. No, I'm not going to say, nah, I'm going to only shoot like, you know, four shots because right. I don't want to embarrass them. No, you shouldn't have got in front of me. Mm-hmm. So I think that there's nothing wrong with carrying the song the same way. Right, nah. Because cause we say competitiveness, and for me, I don't I don't really take the competition like that. Uh-huh. Like, I, I, can, I can thrive in it. Cause I'm not gonna let, like you just said, I'm just not gonna let you just do whatever. Yeah, you ain't about to just kill me. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> but for the most part, now I, I look over, like create over um, competition. But that type of competition is like a, as we say, like a healthy competition. Right. Where you're not upset at each other. You're not trying to undercut each other. Right. You know, you're just saying he's gonna bring his A game. I gotta bring my A plus. Yep. If I bring my A plus. That means you're gonna to have to create something. That means you're gonna to have to be better within yourself to create something and bring your your top of the line game. And that helps out for the end of the song. I'm um, for the song, the end product of the song. Cause now we listen to it and be like, yo, this is dope. Yeah. Because you just try to scorch it and I just tried to scorch it. Yep. And now we get the end product and we're both like, yo, this goes. We're happy. Exactly. And and we're not like, you know what, I hate this guy. Hate like you, you don't feel it, that it, way. It's you know, and it, it's real important. And I, I thought about this when I was listening to um, our album before it came out. Mm-hmm. I was like, if you didn't bring it on the song, you know, it, it kind of ruins the song. Yeah, it doesn't matter how good my verse is. So this kind of it makes you step outside of yourself and mm-hmm. think about the betterment of the whole project. Yeah. Say, you know, if I got the second verse and I could spit the hardest verse ever known to man. But if you got the first verse and your verse is trash, they may not even make it to mine. Right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it is important to go and say, all right, I know what he's going to do. I'm going to go do this. And I don't think you and I rap alike. We don't sound alike. Nah. And we do us. We don't get on I don't get on there trying to be you. You don't right. get on there trying to be me. Right. But we're like, 
it's still that level of I know he coming with it, right. so I have to. Exactly. You know what I mean? And just like we, Eminem and Jay Z, if you listen to those verses and you put them on separate songs, they they may not match. Mm -hmm. But it's just talking about being a renegade, and they got their own different view on what being a renegade is. Mm -hmm. So they approach it that way, and then you look and you say, hey, "It's just a dope song." Yeah. yeah. It's just a dope. I mean, we could argue all day about who has the better verse, and maybe you think this, and I think that, or. Whatever it is, but at the end of the day, I have never heard anybody say that either one of their verses suck. Right. You know what I mean? And that comes from that level. Yeah. It comes from, uh, you know, approaching it that way um, versus, yeah. yeah, so versus saying, like, we're just going to get in here and we're going to make the song mm -hmm. and you're not thinking, bring your A game because he's going to bring his. I can't remember what, um, what interview it was. But I think it was Jay when he was talking about um him and Biggie when they did the song off of the Reasonable Doubt um album. Yeah, and he Brooklyn's was like, finest. Brooklyn's finest, right? And he was saying that they they was going back and forth. Yep. They would spit something, and then Biggie would hear it and be like, Oh no no, I got something better than that. And he would go in and spit, and Jay like, Oh he trying to kill me. Yeah, so like he's going in, and they, and they was like they was just trying to find the most outrageous thing to say over it that would that would beat out the, how am the I gonna beat him yeah right. and it and it made a great song yeah that's what the song sounds like too yeah it sounds like you, you went in there you rapped a little bit and I heard it, it was like oh no he ain't about to get this off on right. me and then go in there and it's like, right. like and you, you do the same about, thing like you, you talking about, you went from you know the popping bottles type thing and and or yeah I'm just coming in the rob type thing but then Biggie come in there and talking about shoot your daughter in the calf muscle you like yeah what? Yeah, you ain't about to do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is my song. No, we ain't doing that. You know what love I mean? I yeah. love it. Because like we said, like we've been saying, it brings the end product. You just be like, as a listener, you'd be like, yo, yes. I, I remember, <laughs> right. I remember um, different songs where you would you would hear the song you would see who's on who's featured on it yep so now you listening and being like alright let me hear what this person gotta say this person gotta yeah. say and then that last one still that ain't on there yet you like alright so he's coming last alright let me see what this person about to say now you getting pumped yep. cause you know the closer they gotta come in kill it I was about to, I was about to bring that up like <laughs> you in order to close a song, especially like a posse cut yeah in order to close a song you had to be crazy right you, you couldn't just come on there with some, like, weak little lines or whatever. Nah. And then it's also opening the song. Mm -hmm. You don't really want to open it weak. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, y'all put me in the front. All right, cool. <laughs> y'all ain't going to follow me. I got right, you. Right, right. You know what I mean? And then it's hard for the guys in the middle because it's like, all right, you got the opener, first verse you hear, mm -hmm. first voice you hear, and then you got the last guy. What about me? Mm-hmm. Oh no, y'all ain't about to do this to me. All right. You know what I mean? Ghost me out on here. And then Nobody you go. Nobody remember my stuff. <laughs> yeah, and, and and that's that's why I, I I love posse cuts, especially when we're talking about people that don't sound the same. Like now, I don't even know if there are any posse cuts. I don't think so. You know what I mean? But I yeah, no so. Reservoir Dogs or uh, Blackout. Go, shoot, I go even crazy for you. Um, once again, this was something that we always would listen to, and that was our time, at least for me. But mm -hmm. you know, around that time. But like so much of the No Limit stuff. I was about to say that the Soldier songs. Oh, oh my man, goodness. yeah. Like we always felt like this whole thing about when we when we talk about different rappers today, where we just like this person is not even on beat. Um, which one? You already we all know 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 those those rappers. Yeah. Oh, he's not even on beat. We actually had that. Mr. Servo, Silk the Shocker. Silk the Shocker. Yep. Like, he was hardly ever on beat. But when his albums came out, we always look forward to that first song. Yep. Because right when you hear, I'm a No Limit Soldier, I thought yeah. I told him. And then yeah, you, you know hear the beat happen. just dropping, you like, oh you know my exactly goodness. exactly what's about to happen. Yep. Right, this is about to go in. Then you get Silk with, with his, his quirky type rap. Yep. And then you got Master P coming on there doing his thing and then you get mystical mystical fiend fiend mia, oh, x, mia x probably one of my favorite mia, female artists she, like of all time me too yeah <laughs> i was so, so underrated so underrated because i'm like when when people want to celebrate female and i just might even take it somewhere else when people want to celebrate um women and and rap 
I'm like, how do y'all just look past me at X? How was she not spoke? <laughs> she was the only girl for a long time. And she's yes. on there with killers. Like, you know, she Mystical, was, he would shut things down. Like, Mystic, right, he would always be, he should have always been, put him last. Yeah, like. <laughs> but Mia, yeah, oh my man. goodness. I can't even remember what song it was right now just because I'm so so hype about her right now. Yeah. But she was on one of them joints with, like you said, a lot of different rappers. But she had the, that is, she had the best verse. When she came on it, we come in, oh, we, we roll thick, thick. We, we represent that truth. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, she was fire. She, she, she killed that whole, and they put her last, and they did the right she thing. She was posing a lot. She meant, I don't even know what song that is. I think it's the no Lim- I think it's the no limit one. I'm um, off of silk. That might be. I think it is. But whichever one it, it was. Yeah, she, she she was supposed to go last. She murdered that song. From the flow yeah. to what she was saying, like the lyrics, and you just like, man, and nobody and nobody even thought even back then, nobody was thinking, who is this who is this lady thinking she no, we was like Mia X. So. Fire. Fire. <laughs> right. Fire. That's it. That's what I got for her, man. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah I, 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 like she should be celebrated. She should. She should be celebrated. She because should. She she broke a lot of barriers with what she was doing. Um, she even had that that straight up sound. Even even the thug stuff. Like yep. I think somebody want they ass with. Oh, that, that was one of my favorite songs. Actually, when I go on like road trips, I have a rule. If we gotta drive longer than an hour, throwbacks. <laughs> I, we don't listen to any like, new music. Yeah. And one of those songs, like, and what we'll do in the car, this is just hip hop heads, we'll be battling. Like, oh, that's what you're playing? Mm. Give me the chord. Like, this is why we always <laughs> want to use the chord on road <laughs> yeah, trips. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let me see that real quick. <laughs> I got something for you. And that was one of those that I, I knocked some, punched somebody's head off right. with. Like, oh, you going there? I right. got something for you. Oh my goodness. The beat? Like, the beat was so creative. Oh my goodness. As we're pushing here, the creativity. The yeah. beat was creative. And then her and Fiend going in back and forth. You got somebody, one, that's named Fiend. Two, he sounds like a Fiend. Yeah, like the, his raspiness. Yep. And then you got her, and nobody ever que- crush, questioned the fact that she had a softer voice. They didn't even call her like a um, female MC, FMC, or whatever they call them. Yeah. She wasn't even talked about like that. Nope. They ran down the No Limit roster, and she was thrown in there, like, in the top five. Yep. And it wasn't like... And it was never... Oh, yeah, and the the only the only lady, this and that. It, that, that was never even talked about. Never That's what made her so about. dope. She was just me ex. Right, because was, it wasn't like no publicity stunt. The only time they talked about that probably was, what, her first album, when it was called First Lady? Yep. She's the first lady of the tank. But nobody ever treated her any type of way like that. Nope. They treated her as a spitter because she was. <laughs> that brings me to another girl that I think uh, isn't celebrated enough. And she's out today. Rhapsody. I was about to say Rhapsody. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, man, this this girl, like, when I got hip to her, I was like mad at everybody because I'm like, yo, mm-hmm. she was existing and ain't nobody tell me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all know me. Y'all, ain't nobody tell me about her. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I, I love her attitude because she say things like, yo, conscious music, I, I make music. And if you're making music about shaking your ass and you meant to make music about shaking your ass, you're conscious of it. That's conscious music too. <laughs> you know what I mean? She said in one of the... um one of her verses, I can't remember what song it is, she said, um, I was just making it clap the Waka Flocka just last week. Mm-hmm. Where people were saying, like, you know, they were going on, like, yeah, the real rap stuff. We need, like, real women in here, like you, da 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 And she's always wanting to say, no, no, don't do that. We mm-hmm. need all of this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just coming with my energy. And she drop on there to say, like, when you see Rhapsody, you don't think that she'd be making it clap ever. Mm-hmm. But for her to, you know, be conscious enough to say that and, you know, like, um, well, I don't know if you see, like, the, the stuff that go around on um, the Internet, but it say, like, I am the type of woman that twerk in the club and burn incense at home. Like, yeah, yeah. stuff like that or whatever. Um, yeah. And I don't think anybody's one type of way all the time. No. I'm the guy that will punch you in the face, but I am also the guy that will you know, help somebody across the street, help mm-hmm. somebody up off the ground. Mm-hmm. I'm the guy that's 
gonna dance in a club and then also the guy that'll post up on the wall. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm not different. I'm just all of these things. Right. But yeah, I think Rhapsody embodies that. She's yeah, she's cause fire. When I, I listened to that that Eve joint, that fire. Eve album, and I'm just like, yo, this is dope. And I was feeling like you. I'm just like Yo, y'all need to be celebrating because, like, I'm here for it all. Like, I'm happy right. that women are getting getting this this louder voice and stepping up. Right. And I'm just like, it's a lot of women that's been here, yep. that's been winning, that's been respected on a, such a level that 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 goes against the narrative, you know, about pushing down women all the time. These women has been standing up and they're standing up strong. And then when I listen to rap, like I said, the Eve joint. It was quote unquote as as they would say conscious on some th- some things, but at the same end it was a album that was celebrating women. Yep. But I'm listening to this joint like yo, this is dope. It's dope. Like I'm not even thinking about oh this is for women. It's yeah. about women. Oh there we go with another another strong woman song. No, I wasn't thinking that. I'm like this goes in. Women need to hear this. Yes. People need to hear hip hop. Need to put this on a pedestal. Every <laughs> woman, girl, every female, I don't know what the correct term is anymore, every one of them that I talked to around that time when it when it dropped said, you said you like rap? Listen to rap. <laughs> Listen right. to rap scene. Right. Because she killed it. And the album is for women. I, I didn't feel excluded when I heard it. I did not. You know what I'm saying? As, as a straight man, I didn't listen and say, oh, yeah, this is dope for women. Like right. it, it just dope. It's just dope. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, she she she's a spitter, and I don't think she gets enough credit. I think more people need to pay attention to her. We got to remember she hopped on songs with Kendrick Lamar, and didn't die. Mm-hmm. You know, back to the BX with No right. Limit, right. and even if we're talking to Eminem, Jay Z, like Kendrick Lamar gets you up out of here if you're playing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So for you to be a uh, female and Kendrick Lamar is this superstar and you're just some girl because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that never even heard of him Mm -hmm. you're just some girl you know what I mean and then he not kill you Mm -hmm. that that, that has to be applauded you gotta give like credit to that you know what I mean Um, right because that's hard for just a rapper forget woman right you know what I mean superstar Kendrick that actually raps Mm -hmm. and then you just unknown Joe you know what I mean? Or you right. got your few little fans over here. <laughs> you jump on there, you you probably gonna die. But right. she didn't. She did not. You got you got to give that kind. You you got to give that up. Um, that's the thing. And that's the thing I will say. I like I like about about hip hop. Like hip hop, hip hop. Yeah. You know? Like I know we 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 had a lot of media coverage where it would say that hip hop always degrading women, but then. A lot of that change, of course, with with Queen Latifah coming around. Oh, I love that song. You too. know, and then, and then just the people that we're talking about, they was respected for what they did. It was never a question of oh, but you're just a woman. No, you're one of us. You like, didn't we, even we don't, we're, yeah. we're not even seeing gender in this. Yep. We're we're saying listen to the bars. She got it. Boom. And it was never one of those. And, and it's still not even one of those things of. I mean, you're good for a woman. Like, nobody yeah, ever said that. That's that's very important. <laughs> that's like, you know what I mean, you're pretty for a dark-skinned girl. Or, right. Yeah, you know what I mean? You're pretty cool for a black dude. Like, right, exactly. What does that even what? mean? Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's very important to, like, acknowledge the dope rappers as dope rappers. Mm-hmm. And the only reason, you know, I wanted to highlight Rhapsody and, you know, Mia X in this is because too often it, we, we hear that, Oh, dope fem C, and it's like, how about dope MC? Right, that's how I feel. That happens to be a woman. You know right. what I mean? I'm a cool dude. I just happen to be black. Like, you know <laughs> right, what I mean? Don't, right. oh, you're cool for a black guy, so you black speak people so aren't well. cool. Yeah, you, you speak so well for a, a hood nigga. Like, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what does that even mean? Right. Like, yeah, I, I feel the same way. Like, it, it, it shouldn't have to always be highlighted in such a way. Right. That oh yeah, the dope dope woman here or dope female MC, and you be like, what? Why why are we doing this? Like why not it, just? That's equality see, right there. That like, is exactly. All right, you spit. I like you. I'm rocking your stuff. That's it. I don't I don't want to have to say, oh yeah, but you know Rhapsody, 
Yeah, that's a dope name, but just let me let you know, it's, it's a woman. She's yeah. A, she, it's, it's a woman that's rapping before you hear, but she's dope. Right. Like, like what? No, yeah, nobody. You're, you're overdoing it. You're overdoing it. It's like, when I, when I was in school, um, I think I was like in elementary school and it stuck with me. Uh, one of my teachers said, <clears throat> if you had a shampoo, you wouldn't say, use this. It won't make your hair fall out. <laughs> Right. That is terrible because now you're making them think about their hair falling out. Mm-hmm. That's like me saying, she's a dope female MC. Mm-hmm. Oh, so the standard is the male MCs up here. We don't say like dope male MC. It's no, just, we don't. He nice. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so I think it's very mm-hmm. important to, all right, if we're putting them on, if we're looking at it as equals, if you can spit, you can spit. And if you can't, you can't. It's not because you're a woman or because you're a man. It's because, yo, I'm not even going to lie. I heard your music and I thought it was trash. Right. Or, yo, it was dope. Mm-hmm. And yo, in this case, can be male or female. Either one can get mm-hmm. it. Um, <clears throat> and, I, and I feel like once we, as long as we're able to just be objective in that, in that fact, then we can just go ahead and just celebrate and enjoy the music and instead of feeling like well we got to put this person here so so it can so everyone would know like yeah we we love women rappers yeah like yeah. no just just put the good rappers there and find a good women that rap who cares yeah. they rap put them there if if it's a whole lineup of the women fine then they're the top ones they're the top ones put them there exactly you know, like, because we, we do know that, that Meg Thee Stallion is, is spitting better than a lot of these a lot of these guys that's out there. Let's keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it real. You know, like, she got more energy and more, um like, oomph behind her music, uh, her, her lyrics, yep. her um the way she delivers them, than a lot, a lot of guys out here. But it's true. We don't have to always say, oh, yes, she's doing it for the women. Like, maybe she is, but yeah. let's just celebrate. Let's celebrate it. If we want to look at this... In a in a in a order not in orderly but in an objective fashion and just be like, this is good music. Not not bump this up because this is a good woman. Like that's kind of right. like what we did with what they did with Eminem, where it was he's just a like, dope white rapper. He's a dope white rapper. And then a lot of white people was like, he is the rapper. Look look. <laughs> so they just putting him up on a pedestal. Yeah. Meanwhile, for us, we're like, yo, chill. He's dope. Yes, but chill. Like you doing way too much. Yeah, like, yeah. He got it. He's dope. Like chill out. You don't have to keep on yeah, saying. Yeah, don't, 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 don't. For a white guy, he. Yeah, <laughs> one for us. Like no, <laughs> right. relax. Like, that, that's cool. one of my favorite things. Um, it is totally off. Uh, drink champs when uh, Nori tells somebody they gotta relax. Like I, that is just so funny to me. <laughs> yeah. Just the idea of telling somebody they gotta relax when they are doing something mm-hmm. like. Hold on, you come here yelling. You gotta relax, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you imagine just trying to get your shit off and right. enjoy yourself. Right. And somebody relax you, like, yo, you right. gotta relax. That's just so funny. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I didn't consciously say it out of my mouth just now. And it just came out. And the first it, thing popped right. up was like, that he be relaxing people. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, who's that in the back making all that noise? Tell him he gotta relax. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the funniest thing ever. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, when you circle it all around, it's 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 kind of like the things, the way that things would be if we can just bring in a lot of creativity and a lot of just accepting one who you are as an artist. Facts. And searching for who, searching for who you are as that artist, like seeing, doing different things as you build up on your artistry, trying different things and seeing what sticks for you, what makes you happy. To the mm-hmm. point where you can be like, I could put this beside anybody and I know it goes. Right. You know, as we build up on that and and put a lot of this creativity in it, then we can get back to the place where we're not following waves, we're not chasing waves. We're all just chasing that great sound, that that great artist piece. Like like a like a painter where they want to paint that that perfect painting, which we know we can never get to, but seeing that we're chasing that now when as a listener as we listen to all these people who's coming out doing them now we can really celebrate what 
this internet was supposed to do for us. Yes. Which was <clears throat> bring us all together and being able to listen to somebody from, from, from California, somebody from Toronto, somebody from Africa, Italy, and just be like, man, these people are dope. You know, somebody from Missouri, and you're like, yo, that he's dope. Yep. And, you're, and you're not trying to just be like them. Now we can enjoy every facet of music. And it would be, bring it back to what you were saying, it would be more balanced. Where yes. now, I, when I want to turn, get get lit, I'm listening to those type of songs. When I want some type of conscious rap, I can listen to a type of th that type of song and still feel good about it. Yep. If, if I want to just listen to something that's laid back and I don't even care what they're saying because I'm zoning out and I just want to zone out on music, then I can listen to a mumble rap and I won't yeah. be angry about none of it. And I won't feel like hip hop is being attacked. Right, and that that's that's the importance of it all. Just making sure that we have variety. Making sure that we have. I like to wear black shoes and white shoes and blue and red. Mm -hmm. If I went into the store tomorrow and all the shoes was black, I'd be pissed. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, yo. Yep. And I I have a lot of black shoes, but if all of the shoes in the world became black, I'd be pissed. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's the same exact way that goes for the music. I need artists to be artists mm -hmm. and make the art. Now, you want to know the business so you don't get screwed, but don't always treat your art like a business because Tyler, the creator, had no way of knowing what Igor would be. Mm -hmm. He had no way of knowing that people would love this because Tyler, the creator... He's listed as a rapper. Mm -hmm. And this isn't a rap album. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think of people like Prince, not comparing Tyler the Creator to Prince, but if you listen to one Prince album to the next, they sound like different people. Mm -hmm. People, I don't think it's talked about enough. Prince albums don't sound like other Prince albums. Mm -hmm. He was just like, I'm an artist and this is what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like this tomorrow. Yep. And you know what I mean? I'm just going to do what I feel like doing today. And, and the fans going to roll with it. And they did. They rolled with it. And they did. And that, why he's considered to be like one of the best artists, you know, period. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't stay in this little box that he was put in. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, yeah. You said I'm what? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I'm doing this instead. <laughs> you know what I mean? And right. That's how you push it forward, and that's how we get variety, and that's how you keep me from getting pissed off at having all black shoes in the store next time I go in there. <laughs> well, there you go. Boom. We got it. We out. Hey, podcast, I appreciate your ears. If you found any value in this begotten experience, pass it forward. Share it with a friend. And if not, thanks for stopping by. Until next time. <laughs>